What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We're back on the movie commentary hype again today and I'm not going to waste any time introing it for you. So sit back, relax and enjoy this movie commentary of Shark Night with a real life shark scientist. So starting off here with the classic shark B-movie trope of a bikini clad girl mooching around in the water seemingly on her own. Ah yes, tricked again as her boyfriend jumps out to scare her. Why do so many shark movies start with this particular scene? It's like a lot, right? So Blokey heads off to the camper van to make some lunch and in the meantime bikini clad girl gets munched by an unknown shark. Probably. So I get that the boyfriend has got some music on in that camper van but surely he can hear his girlfriend screeching her head off here like he's gotta hear something, right? It's a very Chrissy from Jaws scene that we're getting here. It's pretty much a carbon copy. Jaws is still the OG shark film to this day. Cut to a college dorm room here where the science dude from Avatar has quit the alien research and decided to revert to gaming. To be fair, there's probably more money in the gaming industry these days than as a scientist on Pandora, right? Now, I'm not a big gamer myself, but is this how people play Xbox these days? Live cams of their friends also playing the game? Surely not. Anyway, it turns out that the good-looking nerd die has been tutoring this dude, Malik, who I think is our classic jock character in this film. It turns out the tutoring has worked and he's managed to get himself a B plus on a test. And to celebrate that groundbreaking B plus, a celebration is planned at a lake house with some girls that they know. Imagine what they'd have done if he'd have got an A. The dorks are firmly placed in the boot of this car for the trip. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Also joining us on the excursion is our trusty pooch for this film, Sherman. Insert the first needless montage for this film as they drive for the remainder of the day and what looks like all through the night to get to their lake house destination. Now, I've never been to Louisiana, but there looks to be a ton of lakes within just a few hours drive of Tulane University. That's how you pronounce it. But somehow here, they're driving a solid 12 hours. Why have they gone so far? <laughs> And to top it all off, you're telling me that these two dweebs sat in the back for that whole time and are now getting out of the car totally fine. God, my back would be in absolute pieces. <laughs> to be fair, I, I am an old man. So before heading to the lake house, they stop off at a fishing store to pick up some drinks for the weekend. And they've decided to go with one bottle of generic looking vodka and a 12 pack of Red Bulls. <laughs> one bottle of vodka between six of them. <laughs> I thought these guys were supposed to be college students. <laughs> My name's Red. I'm an alcoholic. See, this guy gets it. He knows what's up with the levels of drinking required here. Also, please tell me they've not just called the very obvious redneck dude Red. Please. <laughs> now for our second needless montage here as they drive the boat off to the lake house. This is definitely the movie for you if you're after some needless montages. Take two, Sheriff. Thank you. Hey, is this how you college kids do it, huh? <laughs> I don't think so, beer drinking sheriff. These college kids have only got a single bottle of vodka between six of them. Amateurs. Right, okay, this is getting stupid now. This is the third needless montage. We're nearly 25 minutes into the film now, and we've not really had any shark-related shenanigans, but have had a combined four minutes of montages. Oh man, I'm getting major Pippet Jaws flashbacks here. Don't you dare kill off Sherman the dog already. I will not stand for that. Unbeknownst to the others, wakeboarding pro Malik is being chased by a shark in the water and ooh, <laughs> takes a big old whack, sending him absolutely flying. That is total wipeout style right there. Sadly for Malik, it looks as though he's got into a bit of an underwater tussle with a shark and has managed to lose his arm in the process. Brutal. I think he's gonna need to do a bit better than a B plus on those tests now because his college football days are definitely over. Ouch. Finally, we've got some good shark stuff here. So on goes the tourniquet with the help of a big stick doing that twisting motion to try and tighten it to control that bleeding. And this is exactly what you should be doing if someone has been on the receiving end of a shark bite. Nice work, college kids. Although the only person here who's even mildly qualified to help Malik has decided that he's going to cease treatment and immediately jump into the water to try and retrieve his arm. <laughs> You're telling me that we're about to have a shark film where I presume the sharks are going to eat most of this cast, but this particular shark didn't decide to eat the arm. <laughs> and sure enough, the arm is there, undevoured. And now there's a race back to the dock between shark and arm-carrying man. That's some impressive one-arm swimming there as well. Like, wouldn't he be just be swimming around in circles? <laughs> shark man, this is insane! This is a lake! It's a saltwater lake. What the hell does that mean? It means it's not impossible. 
Okay, so they mention here that this is a saltwater lake. So you might be able to get some sharks in there. Now, I'm no geographer, but I did used to live in Florida and this looks like a bayou, which are often brackish water. So you'd maybe get bull sharks in here, but that's about it. I guess you can get completely saltwater lakes, but your chances of getting anything other than bull sharks in there are very, very slim. I feel like this probably should have been an alligator movie, right? In a desperate attempt to get Malik some professional medical assistance, the team head out on the boat and this girl who's had about four lines max so far does her best to fall out of that boat. The shark boat chase continues, but this scene is giving me major speedy Mako shark vibes. Have you guys seen that clip before? It's really, really cool. Hold on, I'll put it up there somewhere. Anyway, inevitably the shark catches up with her and she's a goner. The sharks continue to attack this speedboat for some reason, rendering the steering useless and setting them on a course to crash headfirst into the dock, conveniently lined with explosive propane canisters. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Malik was basically out cold a second ago and now he's up and ready to bail out of this boat within seconds. The boy is cured. <laughs> the boat of course smashes into the dock, igniting the whole place into a fiery inferno because, well, cool explosions, I guess. <laughs> the team then decides to fire up a flare and try and get some help, but the sheriff doesn't notice the flare and somehow also managed to completely miss the giant fireball explosion that happened earlier. <laughs> he's way too busy rocking out. <laughs> Because the bulls, they just wound up in the damnedest places. So we've got the redneck here who I've just noticed has shark teeth, by the way. How did I miss that before? <laughs> anyway, he gives some fairly solid reasoning here as to how bulls might be able to end up in a random place like this. He says due to a heavy hurricane season, the bulls could have essentially been washed up there in high waters and then were unable to return to wherever they came from when the water receded. Which is kind of what happened on a golf course in Brisbane, I think it was, where some bulls ended up in a lake on the golf course after a river burst its banks and now they just chill in this golf course lake. <laughs> It's pretty cool. So after learning his girlfriend has been killed by the sharks, Malik seeks revenge, of course, and heads out into the lake with one arm and a spear. <laughs> I mean, who's just got a spear lying around in their house to be able to use in this situation? <laughs> he ends up having a tussle with a hammerhead shark. <laughs> yep, that's right, the hammerhead. <laughs> Looks like it's probably a great hammerhead too, based on that massive dorsal fin. So these guys definitely wouldn't be swimming around in brackish water like we might find in a bayou, but they could easily swim around in water that's this shallow. They regularly come close to shore in water that's less than a meter deep to feed on stingrays that are mooching around in the sand. <laughs> Avatar dude takes a bullet to the chest and after climbing up a nearby tree, he shows no obvious signs that he has literally just been shot before the shark does an impressive sideways breach and bite to take him down off that tree. That is very impressive. I bet you wish you'd stayed on Pandora now, don't you? You know how many species of sharks there are? No. There's uh, 350. So Redneck Red reckons, wow. I said that so fast. Redneck Red reckons. That is a tongue twister. You try saying that. Anyway, he reckons there's around 350 species of shark that have been discovered and he's not far off, but it's probably a little bit closer towards 500 than 350. I'm not quite sure where they plucked 350 from because even though this film was released 10 years ago, even back then, there was still probably somewhere between 400 and 500 species of shark. It's pretty hot. Huh? It's called photophores. So this stuff about the cookie cutters here is pretty spot on for such a B movie. I'm actually quite impressed. They talk about photophores for a second here and it's true, cookie cutters do emit light, although it's not quite how we're seeing it here. They're not just like little green fireflies flying around underwater. I'm pretty sure there was a recent study that showed cookie cutters actually emit a blue wavelength of light as opposed to a green like we're seeing here. And it's actually just on their ventral side, which is their underbellies compared to just their whole bodies glowing. It's probably got something to do with camouflaging themselves from predators who might be looking at them from below when those cookie cutters move up the water column. If we pause it here as well, they've pretty much nailed the look of these cookie cutters. They've got that characteristic big eye there which adapts them to living in the deep ocean where light levels are really, really low. You know what else is weird about them? <laughs> they swallow their own teeth. Spot on here as well. These guys know they're cookie cutter sharks. It is true that cookie cutters do swallow their own teeth and it's thought because they don't have much calcium in their diets, this might be a good way to recycle the calcium that's in their own teeth. How weird is that? Do you know what? They might get a lot of shark stuff wrong in this movie, but they've got some bonus points here for me for this cookie cutter shark knowledge. Like, 
Well done, redneck weirdos. The cookies decide that they're all going to attack this girl at exactly the same time, though. As it stands, we're pretty sure that these sharks are solitary hunters as opposed to hunting in groups like we're seeing here, but they're deep sea, so there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about these sharks. So Malik and the life model dude, I can't remember his name, decide that they're going to jet ski the heck out of this place and try and get him to a hospital where they can reattach his arm. I'm not entirely convinced this shark can keep up with a jet ski that's probably going, what, at least 30, 40 miles an hour, but... That's besides the point. Malik decides that he's had enough and sacks it all off by plopping into the water where the shark rips into him pretty quickly. The life model dude realizes that he's also in some major trouble as well now. So he speeds off into the distance and, <laughs> and then we get this badass shark jump jet ski kill. <laughs> I'm actually a big fan of that. That was pretty cool. Tiger sharks, also known as requiems. So it turns out the rednecks are in cahoots with the dorky sheriff and their master plan was to turn this lake into a gorier version of Shark Week by sticking cameras on the sharks and filming them killing people. <laughs> what? This is their master plan? This? At some point, surely the cops are going to realize there's this massive thing online being streamed where people are getting eaten by sharks and they're going to investigate it, right? Surely. They're also picking shark species that don't really even bite people that much. Like, we've already seen the hammerhead stuff and then the sheriff has just mentioned they're going to do stuff with thresher sharks, but these sharks barely bite people. At least stick with the bitier ones like the bulls and the great whites. So Nick goes full carnival dunk machine here as he's dropped in the water and we get to see the shark below, which is quite clearly a sand tiger shark. And I'm pretty sure the sheriff just said it was tiger sharks down there and that it was a requiem shark, which sand tigers definitely are not. I would have thought that it would have been harder to CGI something really specific like a sand tiger shark with those teeth and the shape of their fins rather than to just do a bog standard tiger shark with stripes. Luckily for Nick though, his Zippo lighter still works despite being fully submerged in water for a solid 10 seconds. <laughs> he uses it to set himself free and then roast the sheriff alive before he ends up in the water with the sand tiger who duly rips him to pieces. <laughs> sand tigers are little biters to be fair and we learned that a few weeks ago in that video we did on what I thought was the most dangerous shark species. So if you want to learn how many bites the sand tiger has been responsible for then make sure you click on the link up there or wait until the end screen and click on it then. Climax of the film here I hope as Sarah finds herself underwater in a cage with no air supply but instead of clambering out of the massive gap between the cage there she decides to stay put and wait for Nick to breathe air into her lungs. <laughs> can this be done? I don't know if this can actually be done. Maybe for a few breaths, but I wouldn't imagine repeatedly. I don't know. Just climb out of the damn cage, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah gets a good few head bonks on Dennis who's having an underwater wrestling match with Nick as a massive great white shark heads over to investigate what the hell is going on. And then redneck Dennis finds himself stuck on the cage before we get this great underwater F you from Sarah and the shark tears him to pieces. <laughs> I love it when the baddies get wrecked. We get a nice shot of the gill slits here with the correct number of five for a great white shark. Props producers for that one. It's more than we could say for some other shark films to be fair. <laughs> No, please, please not that kind of roar. That shark just roared like a bear. It's even moved its head upwards as it was roaring like a damn bear. <laughs> hang on, hang on. We're going back and watching that again. <laughs> oh my God, that is so good. They have literally taken a bear noise and overlaid it with this great white shark. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know I can't really talk about the whole roaring shark thing after the whale shark video we saw a few weeks back, but still, that was a literal bear roar. <laughs> anyway, Nick blows the shark's brains out with the air gun and rescues Sarah, of course. Oh, look, even Sherman the doggo's helping too. That is some top good boy behavior right there. Sarah's then resuscitated and we get this slow panning shot of the water before. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, classic. Shark jump into the camera ending. Didn't see that one coming. But oh no, we're not finished there. For some reason, the cast have decided to fit in a little shark rap for us after the credits. Have a listen to this. Ice in my mouth so I can taste the off to band-aids down south cause that's a place the shark bit market. But I only need one take to shake a break these guppy ass sharks in the lake. Wear glasses to see these wicked redemption. Kick shark ass and
Right, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> I'll round it up nice and quick then for you guys. The realism I thought wasn't too bad in this film. The cookie cutter shark stuff was pretty good, so I'm gonna go with the four. Overall entertainment, it wasn't that bad. It was a little bit cringy in some places, but I was fairly entertained, so I'm gonna give it a five. What did you make of this film then? Any good or a load of rubbish? Let me know in the comments. But before you all jet off, because I know there's a lot of you that like to click off the video at this point in time, make sure you stick around to the end screen of this video where you can watch two other Shark Bites episodes that are well, well worth the watch. The first one is about how sharks might be able to make sounds, including a whale shark that might be roaring. And then the other one explains which shark that I think is the most dangerous to humans. You're also gonna get the sand tiger bite stats on that one as well, so it's well worth the watch. Watch them both. Anyway, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. The movie commentaries do take me absolutely ages to make, so I really appreciate the likes. And make sure you subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button, and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time. Break these guppy ass sharks in the lake Wear glasses to see these wicked redemption Kick shark ass in three freaking dimensions Mess with my crew and wham, you're dead Just like this mother shark and ham My head, jam, on bread Peanut butter, I'm toast I eat a heart at breakfast and I make sure I beat them and I eat them with my sharp fingers